and welcome to season one, episode number 40 of Pro Wrestling's Top 50. I'm your host, Travis McNeil, and today we continue our countdown of the top 50 matches of 2020 with match number 11 on our list, which is the highest ranked women's match of 2020, in my opinion. Uh, this was the SmackDown women's title Hell in a Cell match between the champion Bailey and the challenger Sasha Banks from the WWE Hell in a Cell 2020 event held back on the 25th of October. Um, these two have quite the history with each other. Um, their match at uh, the first NXT Brooklyn is one of the best matches I've ever seen in my life. Um, and going into this match, uh, they, they, they've never really had their chance to do something of such a high quality in the actual main roster WWE. Uh, so leading into this, you know, they, they put together a feud. Uh, the roles were reversed, you know, with Bailey being the heel. Uh, you know, they were the SmackDown or the uh, women's tag team champions. They lost the belt. Bailey turned on Sasha, pilmanized her neck. Um, and that led to, you know, Sasha returning, stopping Bailey from using a chair on Asuka at the Night of Champions pay per view. Um, and then from there, the, the chair has kind of been the overall you know, story arc here, um, where the, when they did the contract signing, you know, Bailey didn't want to take this match. Sasha, you know, put her neck through a chair and cranked on it to get her to sign the contract. Um, so the, the chair has been the big piece of this story. Uh, to WWE's credit, you know, they always do really good video packages. There was a great video package leading into this match that, you know, if you don't watch SmackDown on a regular basis, I tend not to. Um, you know, it, it really shows you the, the story leading up to it. And because this match had so many callbacks to, you know, their history and, and things throughout the feud. It was really helpful in, in you know, bringing the viewer up to speed on it. Uh, Sasha Banks has, you know, quite the history at the Hell in the Cell pay-per-view. Prior to this match, she is the only woman that's competed in both of the women's Hell in a Cell matches, both of which were losses. She lost to Charlotte and she lost to Becky Lynch uh, the previous year. Um, so this was, you know, her third chance at the dance uh, with, you know, the third other member of the, the four horsewomen. Um, and Bailey, you know, starts this match. She comes out and she's got a chair with her, of course, and she's spray paint on it, 1-0, basically saying that she's going to win this match. She's going to be 1-0 at Hell in a Cell because Banks cannot win a Hell in a Cell match. Um, they do a, a really fun spot early where um, Sasha Banks runs and drop kicks the chair out of Bailey's hands, out of the cage as the cage is lowering. Um, so they establish right away that, that you know, Bailey's not going to have her, her secret weapon there. Um, really early on, you know, Sasha hits La Mystica and locks in the bank statement. Bailey gets to the floor. Um, and from there, the match just becomes, you know, a big brawl with lots of creative stuff, lots of uses of the cage. Uh, they did a tug of war over a kendo stick, which uh, was a callback in the video package. They showed them having like a tug of war over the belt that, uh, um, you know, on, on an episode of SmackDown. So had I not have seen the video package, I wouldn't have got that. But again, it was kind of a cool little visual play off of that. Um, one of the, the, the stories throughout this match is Sasha Banks' effective use of the Meteora. Um, so she hits this move over and over and over again, and it's always to turn the tide. Whenever Bailey starts to get an advantage, Banks will hit some sort of a Meteora and take control again. Uh, very early on, they have a table out. Uh, she actually runs up the table and hits it onto Bailey into the cage, which looked awesome. She hit a normal one in the ring after that. Um, Sasha ends up being the first to actually introduce a chair to the match. She goes for a chair shot and, you know, Bailey kind of freaks out and gets like a desperation schoolgirl off of it for two. Um, Bailey misses a chair shot. Sasha again hits a Meteora, you know, this time kind of like stepping off the ring apron and doing it into the cage. Um, there was a really awesome spot where Bailey knocked Sasha off the ring apron. Sasha jumped, you know, did it like a Spider-Man spot off the Hell in the Cell, you know, then jumped back onto the ring apron, hit a 619 around it into a Hurricane Rana, you know, sending Bailey back into the cage. It looked awesome. And then she hit another Meteora, you know, this time into the ring steps. Um, they did a, a really just brutal spot uh, where they, they took the kendo stick that they were fighting over earlier in the match and they wedged it between the steps and the cage and uh, Sasha, you know, went for something, probably another Meteora, and got, uh, you know, got dropped toe hold into it. Uh, and then Bailey did like a, a slingshot guillotine with Sasha hitting neck first, uh, you know, into the, the kendo stick. Looked awesome. And then that just, you know, 
like I said, in, in the build up to this, you know, Sasha had her, her neck injured by Bailey. So then Bailey was able to go to work on the neck and did a lot of really good network neck work from there. Um, Sasha, you know, got some desperate, you know, hope, hope spots. Uh, she hit, you know, a very like Jerry Lynn esque kind of turnaround sunset flip power bomb off the ring apron into the cage. Uh, Bailey returned the favor though. They put a chair in the corner that they teased using a couple of times and uh, Bailey hit like a running sunset flip that just shot Sasha back. She smoked the back of her head off the chair. It was brutal and reckless and, and awesome. <laughs> um, they did um, a, a spot that I, I really, really liked. So uh, Sasha Banks went for, um, she got the bank statement in really quick. Uh, Bailey got to the ropes and actually ended up like tying Sasha into the ring apron, you know, very like Fit Finley style. So I'm always a big fan of that. Um, but then Bailey did this spot that when I first watched this match, like I didn't really get it. So she was trying to like tape two kendo sticks together for some reason to make like a big long kendo stick. It was really weird. She spent a minute on it. It didn't work. She was like yelling at the referee that the tape was no good. It just, it seemed really weird. And then um, she ended up giving up on it, going back to Sasha who sprayed a, a fire extinguisher in her face because she was still under the apron uh, from getting tied up into it. And when I rewatched this match is when I really understood the brilliance in this. And I, maybe it wasn't intentional and I'm reading too much into it. Um, but like the common trope in these matches, uh, especially the WWE, are wrestlers just taking forever to set up spots. And then the other wrestler like lying around doing nothing, right? So you set up your tables and your ladders and all these big contrived things, you know, and what's the other wrestler doing during that time so i don't know if this was like an intentional playoff of that but if it was like i tip my hat to both of these women because i thought it was super creative and really cool and if it wasn't if they were just trying to do something with the kendo stick that didn't work out well that's the way i interpreted it so you know it, it was okay um so they do that sasha again hits another meteora into the cage um back in though she goes for a frog splash and bailey's finally able to use the chair she gets the chair up um, but from there, uh, she makes a critical mistake. She sets a ladder up against, you know, over a bunch of chairs and hits a hot shot into it, which looked brutal. But then she wastes all this time with the theatrics. Again, another, you know, kind of WWE melodrama trope. She spray paints an X on Sasha Banks and she has, you know, spray paints an X on a chair and she climbs up to the top rope and tries to do an elbow drop with the chair onto Banks on this ladder. She ends up missing. Um, and Sasha hits, uh, you know, Bailey's own move, right? The, the belly to Bailey um, for, a, you know, onto the ladder for a, a really, really close near fall. Um, Bailey ends up rallying back, hits the belly to Bailey, finally gets, you know, the chair and hits a bunch of brutal chair shots to Sasha, you know, finally paying that off. Um, but then she makes again another critical mistake rather than just going for her finisher again She tries to set it up, you know using the chair behind Sasha's back Sasha counters out grabs the bank statement puts the chair around Bailey's neck again Throwing it back to that contract signing spot and throwing it back to the initial pillmanizing uh, And she pulls back on the chair in the hole and just starts stomping on the back of the chair While uh, Bailey's head is trapped in it and that causes Bailey to submit um, this match was wonderful. It was super nuanced. All of these callbacks to their feud, a whole bunch of different callbacks to Sasha's previous Hell in a Cell matches with Charlotte and, and Becky Lynch, which I thought was awesome. Sasha finally overcomes Bailey. Um, you know, in, in their feud, Bailey won both of their big NXT matches. So Sasha was finally able to beat her foe. She was finally able to win a Hell in a Cell match and she was able to, uh, to take the SmackDown women's title. Um, this match was awesome. I really liked it live. I thought it was way better when I rewatched it and I picked up on a bunch of, of different little things that I didn't get on the first watch. Uh, this match can be watched on the WWE Network, of course. Um, I please ask that you subscribe to the channel here on YouTube, follow on Instagram and Twitter at Wrestling50, and join me again tomorrow as we continue to count down Pro Wrestling's Top 50.